Hey everybody, Luke McElroy from Mets Performance Consulting here. This video is going to be a short one about energy system interplay. We just had a good question on the mastermind group from Jeff, and he pretty much just asked uh, what actually happens physiologically after we reach 100% VO2 max. So it all comes down to energy system interplay, and basically there's three energy systems that we can use to create energy. The first one is the ATP PC system, or the phosphocreatine system. And this is for your this is for your short sprints. It's your less than ten seconds, uh, it, or it's dominant for less than ten seconds. So you're looking at your hundred meter track sprint, uh, your shot put, high jump, long jump, power lifting, um, flying two hundred on the track. All those really short events. Now the amount of ATP now ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It just means how much energy we get. All right, so we get zero point seven ATP um, per phosphocreatine here, which is not that much, but we do get it, as we see here, explosively, really, really high rate. So we get very, very quickly, which is why we do the sprint events there. Now the byproducts that we get, we obviously get some ATP, get some energy, and we get this PI, so inorganic phosphate. Basically what that will do, when we get an accumulation of inorganic phosphate, it's gonna reduce the muscular force. I'll do another video um, in detail about how that happens, but all you need to know is that it will reduce your muscular force, which is obviously why you slow down, particularly on the back end of a 100 meter sprint. The next system we've got is called the anaerobic glycolysis system, or commonly known as the lactic acid system. Um, and this will be dominant from that 10 seconds up to about 75 seconds. And it'll, it'll peak, you'll get this peak energy around that 30 to 45 seconds. So we're looking at like a 400 meter track event, you know, something that lasts close to that 45, 50 seconds there, uh, up to a minute. The yield is two to three ATP, so it's quite a lot more than that uh, ATP PC system. So we get you know three to four times more. So we get a lot more energy, which is why we can last longer up to that 75 seconds. And the rate is fast, but it is slower than that first system, right? So we can't obviously do a 400 the same pace that we can do a 100 meter sprint in, because uh, it is a slower rate. The byproducts we get are obviously those two to three energy molecules, and we also get lactic acid as our byproduct. So lactic acid is made up of hydrogen and also lactate. It's the hydrogen which causes fatigue. We measure lactate in the lab. Um, lactate doesn't cause fatigue. We can, we can actually use that for energy, but we know that lactic acid is made up of one lactate and one hydrogen. So if we have you know 100 hydrogens, we're also gonna have 100 lactate. So it's an indicator of fatigue because we can't actually measure hydrogen. So it's that hydrogen which causes muscle acidosis and will cause fatigue that way. The last system is the aerobic glycolysis system or the oxygen system, if you want to call it that, and it will be dominant beyond that 75 seconds of activity. All right, so we can't quite, we can't use the aerobic system straight from the start because there's a lag period. If you go out and do a 100 meter sprint, your heart rate's not going to go from 600, oh, sorry, from 60 up to 200 in two seconds. There's a lag period. It takes a while for that heart rate, ox, uh, our breathing rate and our muscles to actually start to use that oxygen. Our yield is quite big. We get 36 to 38, all right? So that's a lot more than the, than the previous two systems. It's 18 times more energy than that anaerobic system. So we get a lot of energy. And we even get more for fat, which is called aerobic lipolysis. We get a lot slower, but we do get a lot more for the fat too. The rate's slow, all right? It's a complicated process, has to go undergo what we call the Krebs cycle and electron transport stage. You don't need to know about it. All you need to know is that it is a slow process, which is why we can't sprint forever. Um, the aerobic system is very much a sub-maximal system. The byproducts we get are 36 to 38 ATP. We get heat, water, and carbon dioxide. None of them cause fatigue. Heat will cause fatigue eventually if we can't control it through sweating, hydration, etc. cetera. Um, but the body's pretty good at cooling itself down. Water's created, which is good, and carbon dioxide will just breathe out. So the aerobic system, you can go all day long if you have sufficient fuel sources. Now these three systems, they, they interplay, all right? So they, they don't work independently of each other. They, they do work together, okay? So the phrase we use is that at all times throughout exercise, all three energy systems will contribute to energy production, but it is the intensity and duration which determine the relative contribution of each, okay? So this is saying here, the green one is that ATP PC system, so your 100 meter sprint stuff. We get energy very, very, very quickly. And at the start, see it's dominant for that 10 second period there. So we, from the start, we get heaps, heaps of energy from that. But 
after that 10 seconds, we don't get a lot, okay? It, it won't recover until we actually completely stop activity and just walk around and have a passive rest. The anaerobic system, it's catching up in the in initial stages. See, it takes over dominance at that 10 second point. It peaks around that 30 second point and then it'll start to decrease contribution um, as we get longer, a few minutes in. But still has significantly more contribution than that ATP PC system. The aerobic system, again, takes over dominance around 60, 75 seconds, and we will remain dominant throughout activity. Okay, that sort of makes sense. So this is for sub, you know, for sub-maximal stuff. The aerobic system is obviously going to stay dominant. Even for maximal stuff, the aerobic system will remain dominant um, for the rest of activity, even if we get above 100% VO2 max. And I'm going to show you why right now. Okay. So have a look at this. This is sort of total total energy, so not as a percentage, just total energy that we get on the left and our percentage of VO2 max intensity at the bottom. All right? So 25%, 50%, 70%, which is most people's lactate inflection point. That's their anaerobic threshold, lactate threshold, um, functional threshold power. They all mean the same thing. So that's at around about 70% for the average individual. Then we've got 100% VO2 max, and we can actually go above 100%. So let's, I've just put 110% here. So this green line, let's assume that this is, you know, towards the end of a race. Let's say we've done an, we're an hour in. It doesn't matter. Let's say we're an hour into the race, uh, and we're sitting quite comfortably. We're doing an Ironman, whatever it is. So 50% VO2 max. We're nice and comfortable. In terms of energy, the energy we're getting, this blue line is the aerobic, how much energy are we getting from that aerobic system? The red line is the anaerobic system, and the green line is that ATP PC system. Now remember, we run, we almost not quite run out of it, but we have a, only a tiny little bit of contribution from that ATP PC system after that 10 seconds, and we don't get it back until we rest and stop. Because it's a continuous activity, we're not gonna change the contribution. So it's just a flat line across. It doesn't change regardless of the intensity. This red line is your anaerobic system, okay? Similar sort of similar sort of trend, all right? Up until sort of this 60% VO2 max, it doesn't need to change because we have this aerobic system which is increasing its contribution. We, we're quite comfortable. Um, our oxygen demand is, is sub-maximal, sub it's okay. We can, and we can supply that quite easily just by using this, this aerobic system. So predominantly using this aerobic system, you know, getting 95% of the energy just from that. But what happens when we get above this point, we get towards our lactate inflection point or our, our functional threshold, is that our energy demand is increasing. We need it quite a lot quicker. So we need to pick up the slack and start to get an increased contribution from this anaerobic system. All right, so you see the aerobic system is still increasing, but we need a little bit more energy, so we get that anaerobic system increasing as well. Now beyond our lactate inflection point, this is when our lactate entry uh, it equals removal. So beyond that, we're actually getting lactic acid coming in quicker than our body can remove it. Now the body's really good at getting rid of it. We can, what we can do is we can actually dump what we call bicarbonate in the blood, and bicarbonate will actually uh, combat the effects, the fatiguing effects of the lactic acid. But we can only do so much, and eventually we're going to start to accumulate lactic acid quicker than we can actually get rid of it. So we go beyond lactate inflection point, and what we see is that we get a, a slight, slight increase again in that anaerobic contribution, so that's a slightly sharper increase. But also, we still get more energy from that aerobic system because we haven't hit 100% yet. Although we're getting a, a massive influx of lactic acid because we can't clear it out at the same rate, we're still getting more oxygen in and still using more oxygen. So it's not too bad yet. We're still well and truly predominantly aerobic. A lot of people think that, that functional threshold is where you go from being aerobic to anaerobic. It's just not true. We are still aerobic. Look at all this energy. We get 36 to 38 energy from the aerobic where we get two to three from the anaerobic, all right? So we're well and truly still aerobically dominant. We get to 100% VO2 max, all right? So now we are using the maximum amount of oxygen that we can. So we flatten off. We can't get any more energy from that aerobic system because we've hit our max. So any increases from here is clearly from that anaerobic energy system. ATP, PC still isn't contributing anymore because we've, we've somewhat depleted our stores. Um, so we have to get it from that anaerobic system. So yes, we can go above 110% VO2 max or 100% VO2 max, 
but the, there is a massive, massive amount of lactic acid coming in, whole lot of fatigue being created in the muscles, heavy burning legs, um, and you will you have to stop within you know two minutes really. Like the the 1500 meter runners, they're the ones that sort of run above that 100% VO2 max, and they're only going for the elite guys, you know, three and a half sort of four minutes, and they're spent by the end of it. So you, it's really not functional. You can go above it, um, but you have to start to use a large increase in that anaerobic glycolysis system. If we have a just just have a look at some real data quickly. This here is heart rate in the orange, lactate in the blue. Remember, lactate is an indicator of fatigue. Now, a lot of people think, oh, hang on, we'll see we get a massive influx of lactic acid here, a lactate. Uh, therefore, we must be being, we must now be anaerobically dominant and using more of that anaerobic system. We are using more of the anaerobic system, but we are still aerobically dominant. Remember, we're getting 36 to 38 ATP compared to 2 to 3. The exercise intensity has not increased that much. So we're obviously we're buffering those hydrogen ions, those that lactic acid really well um, with that bicarbonate there. But then once we go from 180 to 210 watts, then we're not doing it very well. We're not buffering it as well anymore. Okay, so we jump up from 2.6 to 6.9. That is not a massive increase in intensity. It's only 30 watts. So you're not going to go from using all this oxygen to just not using any at all and being anaerobically dominant. Our body just can't tolerate the lactic acid anymore. If you have a look here, so we hit it at 180 watts was our threshold, VO2 max of 39.1, okay? It still increases after this because we're still using more oxygen. We get all the way up to 51.5, all right? We're just getting that increased contribution from that anaerobic system, which is why we're getting this lactate come up. Now, sure, this person could go beyond 100% VO2 max, and often it happens. We'll say we might even go another minute or two minutes past that where VO2 just plateaus, but what we see is this lactate just keeps going up and up and up, and it can only go so high before your muscles will literally shut off and just stop working. When we have lactic acid in the muscles or in the blood, um, it shuts off what we call glycolytic enzymes. They're in the mitochondria. So the mitochondria, their job is to, to do glycolysis, aerobic and anaerobic glycolysis, give us energy. So when we have lactic acid, it shuts them off, they become less efficient, they stop creating as much energy, we fatigue and we have to slow down. So as a, a brief overview of, of what we've just spoken about, all three energy systems, they do contribute uh, at the same time. And as the exercise intensity increases, we're going to get an increased contribution from the anaerobic system, but it's not going to become dominant, all right? We get so much more energy from this aerobic system uh, that it, it's just the only way that you can become anaerobically dominant again is if you... You have to be up around 200, 250% VO2 max, even to just touch, touch that 50-50, all right? And that's why when you do a 400-meter sprint or you do an 800-meter sprint, you slow down. You have to slow down because you're not getting that energy in there, okay? It's different if it was from a stock standard start where you're just going from zero to 100% straight away, then you can go well and truly above 100% VO2 max. You can go 180% VO2 max if you want, but you're not going to last very long, um, Put any questions below. Hopefully that was not too complicated and you got something out of it and let me know if you need anything else from me. Thanks guys, cheers. Guys, if you like this video, please comment any questions below and get involved in our Mets Mastermind group. We're gonna post the link below, but it's a free group where we post every bit of content that we create, whether it's a video, um, an article, a blog, something that we find. Uh, in the endurance industry. We put it all in there and you can actually ask questions about anything related to endurance performance. It's completely free. Click the link below, get involved.